privilege being in your house. Oh, Jesus, we come to you before the throne of grace. We may obtain mercy and grace to help us in these times that we're living in. We ask God to search the heart all that is gathered here today. We come together, Lord, in the name of Jesus that we may obtain the fullness of the Godhead body in our hearts and our soul. Lord Jesus, search us in the among us, God, that's not ready to meet you. Lord, wash him in your blood. Lord Jesus, if any sick among us, Make them well. Yes, yes, Lord. We know, Jesus, you come to bind up, to heal, to save. Oh, Lamb of God, that take away the sin of the world, search us today. Breathe upon this house of God. And all that's gathered here, breathe upon their families. Search their families, Lord. No doubt most of us, God that's here, has loved ones, blood kin that's lost out there somewhere in the world. Oh, Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Look down upon us right now, God. We give you praise, thanks. Oh, Jesus, meet all the needs. Answer these prayer requests. We know, God, you told us to make our requests known to you for your glory. Mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. We bring our cares to you. You said cast all our cares upon you, Jesus, for you care. We know you do. We don't see you in action, we don't see you. We help you as the Lamb of God that's changed millions of lives. It's healed all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases. Your gospel and your word is you have sent it to us through the holy apostles. And delivered us out of all our troubles and healed us of all our diseases and sicknesses. And we ask, Lord, to bless all the families. Glory, glory. Lord, look upon all families here. Is there any members in their families that's not saved? God, we pray that you'll save them, Jesus. Lord, look upon all our blood kin. If there's any out there, Lord, that's not saved, send your word. Deliver them out of their sins. Oh, Jesus. Have compassion upon us, Lord. Lord, we know hell is an awful, awful place. 
Jesus. Lord, you said he, those are he that commit sin shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. So God, we see sin everywhere. Mighty God, do something for our country. Oh, Jesus, our country is in a mess. It's, like it's gone to the point of no return. You warned us in the scripture about going to the point of no turning back. Help us, Lord. God help us to do Jesus. That's why we're going about here what we can. He said, few there be that should be saved. Straight is the gate, narrow is the way that leads to this eternal life. It leads unto life, and few there be that find it. But broad is the gate, and wide is the way that leads to destruction. And almost everybody, many, Almost everybody is on that highway, on that road. Jesus, look upon us, Lord. God in heaven. God, I've got ten folks I don't even know, but if they're lost, save them. I pray, Lord. Oh, 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 oh Jesus. Save me. Mighty, mighty, mighty God. You know your way, you know your will. Lord, we come to bless all these prayer requests. Bless these all. Lord Jesus, sanctify them. For we know most of it's used for someone to anoint somebody else. It's in your word. Mighty, mighty, mighty one of Israel. Bless it, Lord. Jesus. You said if any sick among us, let us nor the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh God, make it anointing. Thank you, Lord. People to be healed the prayer of faith. So save the sick. Drop that prayer of faith in our hearts, Lord. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. What you continue to do, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Mighty God. In my mind, keep us, Jesus. Lord. Keep us, Lord. Lord, don't allow us. Lord, we love us. But let us have mercy upon us. God, send some help. Lord, you said our help coming from the Lord. God, we need your help. I ain't got to have it yet, Lord. Lord, I'm down here where the devil is. The devil going through there like a roaring lion. Lash it out at everybody he can. Cheer. Cheer. Holiness around you. Build a hedge about us. The devil can't do. Build a fence about us. But the devil can't get to the Lord. Lord, I want to go to heaven when, it, when you come. Lord, I believe the scriptures. God, I believe the scriptures. Lord, you said we do greatly or because we don't know the scriptures. We, we're in a mess. Lord, write your word in our hearts. In our minds, God. That's all these needs. If you've got a need, lift up your hand and reach out to the Lord. Oh, God.
God, right now, I want you to see that lifted hands. It's got personal needs, family needs. I pray, Lord, to do. Oh, Lamb of God. Pray, Lord, for Takes away your sin, Lord. Bring him to that place, Lord. Search our hearts. Lord, see if we have committed sin. Jesus said, we say we didn't commit sin. Commit sin, we'd be liars. So, God, we know we all have sin and come short of your glory. And you said you come to heal broken hearts. That by your stripes that our bodies Jesus. are healed. You took those lashes not to save us but to heal us. Jesus. So let it be so. Let it be so. Let it be written. Let it be so. God, we give you the praise. Oh, God, give you the praise. Lord, bless you. The pastor and his wife. Oh, they got any young ones and grand young ones. So your word out there to save them and save them. All the rest of the people, Lord, move. Oh, God, move. Thank you, Jesus. God, move. Bless this day. Sanctify this day. Hallelujah. Make this day a special day, Lord. Yes. That not that which is lame be turned out of the way. Yes. Sick. <laughs> but let him be healed. Yes. God, those that come in with sin in their, sin in their lives, let them live without sin in their lives. Blot out our transgressions. And our sins, Lord, cleanse us from all filth of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we praise you, Jehovah. Thank you, Lord. God, we praise you, Jehovah. Sanctified, Lord. Keep me the straight and narrow, Lord. Straight as the gate narrow. Help me, Lord. And I'll be able to walk down in. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Was all sin in this gathering away, Lord. Cover the sins that's gathered here, Lord, by your blood. Heal everybody that's here with your stripes, Lord. Make them whole by your stripes. You be the praise. God, you be the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, lift up your hands to the Lord. Love you, Lord. God, you say you ain't keep your commandments. You say you love him, you'd be worse off. Amen. I said all liars going to heaven. Oh, no, it didn't. That's what he said. You say you love him, you don't keep your commandments. What did the Bible say you were? Liar and truth in him. It said all lies. <laughs> you ever saw that movie Quickly Down Yonder? That's about to all these liars. <laughs> Quickly down. <laughs> I didn't want to go to heaven. I told the Lord a long time ago. I said, Jesus, just build me a cabin. Huh? 
Just let me be running loose up there. Ain't gonna be no rain or storms no hell. So if you sleep in the highways of heaven, you're about as good as one. I imagine that. Amen. So I get to Sister Terrell finds me. I go before she does. But I'm hoping he'll come while we're both alive. I wonder about you. I am praying for the coming of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise his name. Amen. You know, one of the writers said it's good to be in the house of the Lord, didn't he? Amen. I was glad when he said, let us go to the house of the Lord. Amen. Praise his name. Amen. Nothing like Jesus. Glory, that one song, somebody big song at one time. Brother, have Jesus and silver and gold. Brother, have Jesus. Because some of y'all probably agree with that. You rather really have money. <laughs> you rather really have gold. But gold ain't no good. It's been tried in the fire. And that's what the Bible said. He does for us. Tries us in the fire. Amen. Isn't that right? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Great God. Thank the Lord. I tell you, we've been on the road since the first part of last week. The mobile for a few days. I tell you, it was good to be down there with people. I don't like mobile. Too close to the ocean, and I, be, I, I think about the tidal waves somewhere. That the Bible talks about. Man, I want to be a hundred miles off the motions when that happens. This whole world began to reel and rock like a drunk. Man, the banks gonna be coming out of them rivers, ain't they? Lord have mercy. The water's going to be, the tidal wave's going to be coming out of there. I don't tell you how many miles I can't outrun. Now there's a few scriptures in there that says, whoa. And also said, whoa, about these church folks just get lazy. Oh, we'll be under them at easy time. Amen. <sighs> you get up and eat breakfast in the morning, you get up and go to church when church time comes. Amen. 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 I tell you what. Yeah. And people have been this day and now they've lost that they have enough for first got saved. I wasn't on 39 and holding ain't no telling how old I'd be. Hallelujah. But when I first got saved, man, everybody was glad. One of the old prophets said, I was glad when they said, let's go to the house of the Lord. Now just about got drank folks to church. The worse than I was, when mom used to put me on the school bus. Honestly, stop at the next house I got off, hid the woods all day. Screw bus come out at that boy. And I jump back on that bus and then he stopped at our house. Thank you, Jesus. God's good. 11 years old, second grade, Lord help me. People didn't understand that, you know, kids better make fun of me. I stayed in the hospital six years, I was six years old until I was 11, 12 years old, that old. 
disease I had, cancer, bone. So the Lord come one day and healed me. And then I started screaming. And by laughed at me. You know, school teacher understood it, probably. But kids out here don't understand nothing. Because they get a little bit of growth on a movie. At one of our kid folks' house, I got saved. And that little boy about that big, you know, his name was Mike. I'll never forget that. Man, he came in that house put a rattlesnake in his hands. And his mama got scared and said, Son, take that rattlesnake. And throw it out the door. If you don't, it'll bite you. <laughs> a little boy looked at me and said, Mike bite matters. Mike bite rattlesnake. <laughs> and he reached, bit that thing, that thing started shh. <laughs> Everybody's got <laughs> Just as poison. <laughs> Never forget that. Well, that's where it is in church, you know. Everything's so mixed up. Church ain't like it was. Ain't like it was when I was a kid growing up. And some of you either, you know that. Used to be called the house of prayer. But what did the Bible say? Made it a what? All of them. Let's see. That bad name. Yeah. It's right there now. Yeah. 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 About all these churches across the country. The people that made it a den of thieves. Yeah. 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 Boy, we never ever got back to that straight and narrow gate. Boy, we need to get to in a hurry. Look at all this stuff that's happening in our world. They already, we just said the second month, and they already more than happened this month, yeah. I mean this year, than used to be happening a year. Yeah. Yeah. Man, signs of the time everywhere you look, and can't nobody read them. Even church folks can't read them. Amen. Church folks run around here like they, they got another hundred years. Right now, they got right up here in the United States ahead. This country, they done got little chips already made up to put in everybody's head or hand. I mean, they, they, they now. And you know, the old preachers think they're going to just write a number on your head. They didn't understand the scriptures. The Bible said, We've been so messed up, folks not understanding the scripture and the power of God. And I said all the time, I didn't have no sense at all as far as education. But when I come and read them scriptures, and that's the only thing I learned to read was the Bible. Never did say on your head, it said in your head. And I've said all along, it's got to be more than nothing on your head. So said, going to put that thing in your head. And money's going to be done away with. Yeah. We're yeah. doing away with that right now. That's right. Most of these convenience stores and other places selling stuff by numbers. People are going to see them every time. Maybe uh, going to be somebody ahead of you. Traveling and stop getting a bottle of water. Uh, and somebody in the hand, you see them. Putting numbers, taking a car, running through that. And people stealing these cars, people, there's a, uh, uh, Brother Tyrone, some of y'all remember, he drove me for two or three years. He 
he had three or four different cards that he bought. And some or another, somebody, uh, I guess it was over shoulders, got that number. Man, one day he, he, he got a thing in the mail that he owed $70,000. And, and had me pay it. Well, I didn't have that kind of money to give him pay. And, and they found that card in Australia. Somebody was over here from Australia. And most of all that was spent in Australia on his card. And he had to pay it. That's kind of where we're living in. You know? And I tell you what, all of that tells us that me and you are coming right down to the door. The Bible said, even at the door, didn't it say that? The coming of the Lord? Even at the door. But we don't see it. Run around here like we got. Man, then a second go by, you don't need to be ready to meet the Lord. And all this stuff we got on us, we're coming in the door. Somebody down here. Amen. Amen. all that stuff. Man, people doing stuff, wearing stuff. They ain't got no business. Is it what? What's the sin in? I don't care if they ain't sin in. If they are sin, I ain't sin is. We get, need to get rid of all that stuff. Amen. Might not be a sin, but the Bible says a weight. Amen. And it's keeping people. From finding God, getting closer to God. Cares of life. Cares of life. We got so caught up in cares of life, the Bible said we don't have time for God. But Jesus is coming. But not right now. Somebody walk back to why, preacher? I say, nobody ready. What are you coming for? <laughs> <laughs> I ain't seen no church without spot, have you? Huh? Yeah, you didn't say he's coming back to this mess. Except for church what? <laughs> oh, have mercy. I got a few rings in my face. <laughs> I thought I had records in my clothes. <laughs> I said, Lord, get these records out of me. <laughs> Ain't that right? Yeah. But every day, Country's in a mess, ain't it? Yeah. That old big man, you know, he's got the richest man in the world, he is, running for president, you know, trying to get it. Sometime back, I saw him on TV, somebody asked him something about the Bible or something. Well, I believe some of it. And yet, him trying to be the leader of this country. Got enough trouble up there with Obama. He don't. He believe in more hammer. You know, man, that you couldn't even run for president if you didn't believe in God. Yeah. Are you saved or not? Remember when Obama was they ordained him in there? What he done? The man dropped the Bible. He didn't drop no Bible. He just wasn't gonna lay his hands on it. You say, how do you know? I know that. I felt that devil in him. You used to have to lay your hand on the Bible to swear or confirm that you're going to hold the country up with this Bible. Then they've done it again in secret because he didn't touch it. If he, if he, if he had done it, and uh, if he's going to lay his hand, he'd done it in public. All this stuff the church folk doing, I turn in the dark. Well, it's going to come to light when it's Man, you stand before 
that, that great white throne judgment ain't no black throne, ain't no yellow throne, ain't no wrinkle throne. It's a white throne of judgment. And you stand before there, it'll be whiter than these hunches. You better be standing there without a spot or a blemish or any such thing. You may come in the front door, but you go out the back door. <laughs> right into hell. Right now, the devil's angels. This is over that book of Turtle. I saw this in imagination. The devil's angels right now got all kind of tools down there enlarging hell, making it bigger because it ain't big enough to hold people. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what the Bible too about the hell enlarging itself. Well, somebody got to dig that. Because it's down. And that's what the uh, devil's bunch right there. The devil's got angels right now enlarging it. Yeah. And things just don't enlarge itself. Right. Amen. The Bible said hell is enlarging itself. The devil's are angels are enlarging to make more room yeah. for more people Amen. in hell. Amen. Mouth open without measure. Man, when I read that, if the devil was in, that would scare him out of me. <laughs> Man, I'm saying, that's true. You ever said, you hear about say, the boy scared the devil out of me? <laughs> How many ever had the devil scared out of me? I just want to be safe. I met my mind, well, I'll hush. But I'm just telling you, we need to get close to God, folks. We need to be praying together. We need to be. You know, the church doors never should be locked. Amen. Because this church is, people that goes here, there should be somebody used to when I was, uh, before I got busy traveling all over the world. The churches used to, never was a church's lock. Somebody be praying all the time, day and night, 24-7. It'd be somebody, more than one person. Time one or two or three people leave, it'd be somebody else coming in. Yeah. Day and night. Amen. The house of God then was called the house of prayer. Amen. Amen. Now all their names, most of them just hypocrite names. Amen. Prayer house. Yeah. Ain't nobody praying. You <laughs> <He> lying. <laughs> Man, I guess it's a prayer house deliverance. <laughs> and it's a by all day long. It's a truth. But it used to, when I got saved, as a teenager, I mean, every church was praying. You never went by church that somebody wasn't praying day and night. Watching and praying, therefore, always. You notice that didn't say it, didn't have no S on it? Always meant all the time. Always don't mean all the time, but always. Praying always without bombarding them heavens. We're going to give you a chance if you can help us. Uh, in the scriptures here. The first one I want to begin with is Luke. Uh, 9 23. I'm going to start at 22. Saying the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be slain, and he shall rise the third day. He said to them all, If any man, that's what I'm talking about. He said to them all, If any man will come after me, I heard this this morning when I woke up. Of course, we didn't get in bed late, and I usually pray, and I like to read before I do. 
He said to them, Oh, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. For whosoever or whoever will save his life shall lose it, but whoever lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. So, what is a man advantage if he gains the whole world and lose himself or lose his soul lose himself and touch something yes. and be a or be a castaway you know we don't realize how easy and this is a, uh, as one scripture said straight as a gate and there is a way But Luke is telling us here, <clears throat> you can come to him. Yeah. And there's another scripture. He said, you will not come to me that you might have life. God wants us to come to him. Come unto me, all you that labor. Yeah. And right now, people are going through some troubled times. You know, people used to be able the kind of money that people have made, been making in the last uh, 20, 30 years, people used to put money in the bank, but now everything is so high. <coughs> to money just don't go nowhere. Yeah. A lot of people make more money in one day now than they used to in a week. And it can't nibble. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's why we really need, we are in perilous times. Yeah. Perilous times, you look it up, mean hard times, troubled times. But Jesus is telling me and you, some of us wonder why we're in a minute, but you're, he said, you won't give me a chance. Amen. He ain't going to run after you. You're going to have to come to Him. Amen. You know, too many people think God will pull and run down. He don't run you down. Right. He got too many people running from Him now. He never catch them all. <laughs> so you got to come to Him. You got to want Him. And He's telling us, cast all your cares. You read over in Peter and other of those epistles. Cast all your cares by his stripes. One place Peter said, You were healed. Amen. You fight over in Matthew, he said, Come unto me, all of you. It's labor, tired, can't hardly survive in your daily living. Come and bring your troubles to me. Amen. And if you will, you will find out. That Jesus cares. Yeah. Yes, he does. Cast all of your cares. And he said to them all, if any man will come into me, let him first deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Whoever will save his life shall lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man advantage? <clears throat> What a man advantage if he gains the whole world and loses or lose himself or be a castaway as one should said lose his soul what will it profit him? What will it accomplish? Some or another we're all going to have to be God. Amen. 
I got a fan out of it. Try to keep it off, it break off. Then it gets close to me. But God wants me and you to come to Him. <clears throat> He's never too busy <clears throat> to answer your prayers. <clears throat> and He said a lot of us is in the mess we're in because we had brought our problems to Him. <clears throat> He's not bashful. Yeah, you're not frightened when you come to him. Man. You know, some of us get around a bunch of people and get you shaking. <laughs> you know? But he's not that kind of God. He is a God that so loved the world that he sent Jesus here, the Word made flesh, to live like me and you live, but without sin. Had to take a bath, had to wash up, had to eat, had to live, had to go to the toilet. Yet he's God. Every bit of him is God. The blood comes from the male. No matter what it is. And Mary was a virgin, so not one drop of his blood was a human blood. That's reading his blood was saved. I don't care. Watch out there. Anything that, 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 that uh, ever, everything that out there, blood comes from the male. I don't care if it's a bull, I don't care if it's a dog, I don't care if it's a rat. I what it is, the blood comes from the male. God fixes it that way. So Mary had no relationship with a man to get pregnant. So Jesus didn't have one drop of human blood. It don't come from the woman. Don't come from the female on anything. So God fixed it like that because he knew way down in hundreds of years 4,000 years later that he was going to birth a son thank God to a virgin Mary and that son was going to be God in the flesh and was going to be made by the Holy Ghost made by the Word of God the Bible said in the beginning was the Word and the Word was made flesh well that he, Jesus is the only person ever lived that was the Word made flesh I mean you had a daddy everything else I had a father out there, but Jesus didn't have a father. Glory, hallelujah. So he is the word made flesh. And he said, if you come unto me, if you bring your cares to me, if you cast your cares upon me, Peter said, cast all your cares upon the Lord. Maybe nobody else cares, but he cares. I was reading, he had one of his writers say, you won't come to me to give me a chance. Give me a chance. Amen. Give me a chance. Amen. I remember when I first uh, seen this tear of my heart jumped up my mouth. And I thought to myself, and I rebuked myself. <laughs> no, women don't do me that way, but she did. <laughs> Man, just tore me all to pieces. Not, uh, not bad wives. And I thought to myself, and, and a little boy said that she'll make you a, a helpmate. She'll be in there with you and for you. Man, I thought, look around, I was, I'm going to be her grandpa. <laughs> Hallelujah, anyway. Go. Pretty close, did you? Thank you, Jesus. And so I prayed to rebuke myself. I said, I said, I but she kept coming to the meetings. You know, around Atlanta. Brother Ford had a church just and then before she went to church, she lived in Atlanta, but went to Brother Ford's church just across uh, uh, Georgia line over in Alabama. And I went over a lot to Brother Ford's church, you know. He used to get, he said, if you just can't come by, just one day come by. And see him both for a while, but he's always been a, a person I appreciate. And so some guy was wanting to go with her. She didn't go with nobody. And she asked me, then I know about this guy. He uh, said, about this guy. She may not remember that. Something other. 
And what kind of guy was I said, I don't know. <laughs> All I know is that I'll get back. And she said she left me. Uh, she said, I don't know what, what did he mean to that. <laughs> so I, I said to myself, if you're going to get that woman, you're going to have to get on the ball. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Glory. Glory. So, man, three days didn't go by until I got the nerve up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Tell her I loved her. And one day I wanted her, she would be my helpmate. And the Lord already showed me this. She would stand with me. She would help me. You know, it, man don't just need a wife. He's a preacher. He needs somebody to help him. You know, it ain't just the bed and somebody cooking a, a, a steak or something. She's the best cook in the world. She studied all that stuff. But that ain't what you need. You need somebody that you can call up at midnight. Amen. See, I need some prayer agree with me. And she's that kind of person. Yeah. Hallelujah. What I'm saying that that's what you gotta do to Jesus. You yeah. gotta come to him. You gotta get you can't just sit around here, uh, freeze up. You know, every time I chat, freeze up, you know. <laughs> that's why some people are in church. Yeah. They get in church and God be answering people in prayer. Some people just freeze up. God said, make your request known. Come unto me. Cast your burdens upon the Lord. Ask that you will receive. Knock and I'll open. I don't care if I am asleep. Knock I get up and open the door for you. Hallelujah. See, I'll come out behind the bushes and let you find me. Hallelujah. I'll make myself known to you and you will uh, seek for me. I may be here. You may not know where I am, but you start seeking me. I show up where you can see me. Hallelujah. He's not a God that he's run over down to him. He's a God with an open heart, with an open ear, and he's listening. His ears is listening to all these over nearly 8 billion people in the world today, according to the latest polls, and he hears every one of them as they pray. Amen. Every one of them if they pray. Thank you. So you got to come unto me. you got to come to him. Whoever will save his life shall lose it, but whoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save him. You gotta follow him. You gotta daily follow him. If you'll do this, if you'll daily deny yourself, take up the cross, this ain't something you just take the cross up right there and nail yourself to it and it's over with. You gotta bear that cross. You gotta show him that you need him. He's the most important person in your life. There is no other name under heaven given among men that can help you but His name. There's a lot of names out there, but there's no other name that can help you but that one name under heaven. All these nearly 8 billion people in the world, ain't one of them got a name that can save you, but that man that walked the earth 2,000 years ago, and they called His name Jesus, for He shall save His people from their sin. They called his name Jesus, and by his stripes you were healed. They called his name Jesus, and he said, Whatever you ask the Father in my name, I will give it to you. He said, All you gotta do is start seeking for me, start knocking for me, hungry for me, thirst for me, like you want his more that hunger and thirst after him. He is your righteousness. He is your Holy Ghost. He is your God. The Word of God made flesh. He's what you need now. How did all this old church stuff in heaven you? All these old religions ain't saving you. All this singing ain't saving you. Ain't the one man given under heaven among men that can save you. And it's Jesus. I said it's Jesus. I said it's Jesus. One day I got some mad at him. I said, you get the H-E-L-L out of here. <laughs> said, Boy, ain't what we did. <laughs> 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 Don't you 
Some of you probably said that word before. Hallelujah. Did you get to I said the real thing. Hallelujah. I don't want you in my presence, you ugly old devil, you. You old, uh, out here trying to go behind people's back, trying to show up like you're going to be something good and then get them out there in the world and kill them in sin. Wake up, people. You don't need to die the one name given under heaven a lot of minutes. Save his people yeah. from their sins. Yeah. You got to knock. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Whoever saved his life shall lose it. That's what people right now, probably some of you here, are really losing your eternal life, what he's talking about. Yeah. Losing that life that, of the end. Some people live to be a hundred years old or ninety years old and never and they lost the life of Jesus yeah. and died without him. Yeah. That's what you don't want to do. There's an eternal life out there that he's talking about. You live for God. That was an eternal life. He said, I'm, I'm right now. He told his apostles and he's still doing it or he would come. So I'm going to prepare a place for you. When John, his half brother, on the Isle of Patmos, saw that revelation of the of the book of Revelation and wrote it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. He was Jesus' half brother. When he wrote that book of Revelation, he described all that's happening in our day. That's right. It's all right now. You see it? He said, when you see all this thing come to pass. The end is near, even at the door. There's no time. You don't have five minutes to serve the devil. You don't have three minutes to serve the devil. If you're serving the devil three minutes, and that sound of that Easter come out of that east, and that voice cries out, "Behold, the Lamb of God coming!" If you ain't ready, you ain't gonna have time to get ready. But if you ain't ready with that name when he appears in them skies and with that holy gross cloud of glory, when he comes on that cloud, when every eye, every grave, everybody in that little cremated bottle is going to jump out of there, every old bone that, that's going to jump back up, everybody, I don't care what, if it cremates you, you're going to jump back, praise God, with a new body, and you're going to have to be ready. It's that soul inside of you. That, that, that Jesus going to put you in that new body and you go to hell you're going to be in a body because the rich man said just let Lazarus take your finger in water and cool my tongue he had a tongue down there didn't he he said I'm tormented he had a mind down there I'm tormented in these things and if you can't so let him go tell my five brothers they don't want to come down here when you go to hell you ain't want nobody else to go with you hallelujah I said you ain't going to want nobody else to go with you you don't want everybody Everybody tend to you to get a message. Don't come where I'm at. This is real, people. And time is running out. And we ain't got time to put him off. And look at 24. Whoever will save his life. That's what people are doing right now mostly. Yeah. Saving their lives. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You know what's the truth? Amen. They're saving their lives. Amen. They're saving their lives. It's time to lose our life. Amen. Spiritually. Amen. For him. Whoever saved his life should lose it. Amen. Whosoever will lose his life for my sake 
shall save you. For what of a man advantage if he gained the whole world and lose himself or be a castaway? I tell you. And what in the world have we accomplished if we gain the whole world? You know, there's people out there trying then. Trying to gain the whole world but losing their soul while they're doing it. I said, losing their soul while they're doing it. Amen. It ain't worth it. Amen. If you could be a thousand years with him, that's only a day anyway. Yeah. Ain't that right? Yeah. With us it ain't, but with him, that's only a, 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 a day anyway. Yeah. One thing about it, you know, God gave me a song one time. I got a gold record on. God never takes a vacation. Amen. Jesus never takes a vacation. Amen. He never takes a vacation. Amen. He's always, he's never too busy to hear you pray. Amen. He never, uh, he, you know, some place you go and they won't see a doctor. So, oh, he's off today. Amen. Maybe you won't go see your attorney. Well, he, he, had, he had to go out of town today. Yeah. I got that one lawyer I love and appreciate that came over and flew to uh, India years ago. And, and when they was going to have me locked up, flew over there and talked to them people and told them people and they were going to kill me. And he flew over there. And uh, and got me out of there. Well, that's where Jesus is. And he didn't charge me either. Thank God. He just uh, been a friend of mine, one of the best lawyers in the country. He always told me, you know, when I first met him, that he didn't believe in God, but I taught him and through me he found God he always told us I don't care who you are you need me I'll be there don't you know that's the way Jesus is yes. yeah. that's the way Jesus is yes. he's always there yes. to help you yes. but some people he said on the 26th for whoever, whosoever shall be ashamed of me yes. and of my words of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory and in his Father's glory. Ain't that wonderful? Amen. Now the holy angels. But I'll tell you of the truth. There will be some standing here who shall not taste of death till they see the kingdom of God. Ain't that true? Amen. And people here will not see death till they see the kingdom of God come in power. He wasn't talking about the second coming of Christ. He's talking about that day of Pentecost. Thank God. Amen. That's when the Holy Ghost came in power. Amen. You want to have thought of that? Well, I did anyway. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. The kingdom of God came in power of the dead people. Yes. Glory. The glory of God. Amen. On the dead Pentecost, when God was made glory, He was glorified. Jesus was glorified. Yes. That's the reason when he first rose from the dead, someone was going to grab me and said, Don't no, wait a minute. Don't touch me. Amen. I'm not yet appeared to my father and your father, my God and your God. Amen. But said, Go tell my disciples, I'm going to meet him over here. Amen. And he said, Amen. Hallelujah. Don't look. Be sure you look up Peter. Because Peter done messed up and denied him and said, find Peter and tell him it's okay. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. No, Peter denied him. Yes. Went all started back fishing with him. Yes. He said, and Peter. 
He wanted Peter to know that just because he denied him there uh, uh, when he was crucified, that he still loved him. Hallelujah. You may have denied him somewhere, but come back to him. He still loves you. You may have backslid a little, or you may have gotten mad and, 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 and cussed the devil, but he still loves you. You can come to him. I said you can come to him. You might have had a fight with your wife, but you can still come to him. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. He wants you to come to him. He, he said, put your trust in me. Cast your cares upon me. Not that I'm going to open the door. I'm not sending my maid to the door to open the door. I'll be there. When you knock, I'll open the door. Pray God, ain't no maid going to open my door. I ain't got no maids working for me. You can come direct to me. I ain't got no superintendents over me. I ain't got no bosses over me. I have the fullness of the Father in me. If you want to see my Father, you got to come to me anyway. I'm the door to get to my Father. Hallelujah. I said, I'm the door for you to get to my Father. Just come to me. That's all you need. Come to me, all of you. All of you need some help. I give you some help. I give you some rest. Hallelujah. Glory, I feel the Holy Ghost. Don't you feel the Holy Ghost? Glory. I said, glory. It's just something about Jesus. Yes. Yes. Amen. Then said Jesus to his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, follow me. For whoever will save his life shall lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake shall find it. You better think about that. Yes. You may think, well, I'll just... I'll spend a little more time out there. Go ahead. <coughs> You're going to lose what you could have got. Amen. Well, just keep serving the devil. Just, just keep it up. I got a little say of myself, you know. Are you going to tell the devil and hell's angels? <laughs> I don't want nothing to do with them. God is reaching out. And he said, then said Jesus to his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, follow me. You know something, well, I, gotta, I can't get myself so involved with God. This is what he said here. For whoever will save his life shall lose it. See, that's what's wrong with this generation right now. We're so caught up in us. Amen. 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 People ain't got time for church hardly no more. Amen. Some churches, big churches, the biggest church in Dallas. Used to have 30,000 members. As a Baptist preacher on over about 10, 50 miles or something, wants me to come over and preach four or five days at another Baptist church. And I had to make a turn. And the last time I turned on that highway to go to that other church, which is seven miles, I was looked over, I was on a Sunday morning. Used to, that, there was over a square mile of cars used to be over. Now at that church, that they need 50 or 60 cars sitting out in front of that church. That's how folks have forgot God. Yeah. And but now we need to be finding him. Amen. For whoever will save his life shall lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake shall find it. For what if man prosper if he gains the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Amen. What would you right now the people in hell offer everything they can? It's like the rich man, you know, when he'd give Lazarus a piece of bread. He prayed. Said, let Lazarus, Lazarus went to heaven. 
the Bible said. Angel took him. He said, that lad is just chicky finger and water couldn't mind come. The Lord answered that rich man said, not so this. There's a good between us and that. He said, once you get up here, you can't come down where you're at. Once you get down, you can't come up here. There's a big mountain to climb. There's a good. And once you get down there, and, and that's the reason that I spent my life trying to reach people before they get down there. Amen. Ain't no getting out of there. Amen. This is a time that you got to lay your life down yes. and, and, and and look around. Look how fast everybody's getting older. Amen. Man, used to growing up, maybe you growing up, you always got a little birthday present or something or other. You look like you couldn't even have a birthday in ten years. <laughs> Now, just like that old clock goes around 24 hours and starts another day. <laughs> Every time you have a birthday, about 24 hours, you, you got another birthday. <laughs> when I first started coming up here, some of you wasn't even a third my age. Now you done older than me. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm still jumping around here like a frog. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Still reading by that my glasses. <laughs> Hallelujah. Still got... Vim in me, and some of you done got so far back there. <coughs> you're walking around like you're half dead. <laughs> you know, Jesus lightens you up, don't you? Jesus renews your strength. Jesus put fire in your bone. Put fire in your bone. It said in the Bible, like fire shut up in your bone. That's what church folk need. They need something like fire shut up in the bone. Get excited. There used to be a song when I first started going to the, I guess it's oldest meeting. So let's get excited and go tell everybody about Jesus. And, and Matthew's telling us. If you gain the whole world, think about it. Lose your soul. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his holy angels. Then shall he reward every man according to his work. Well, I said to you, there should be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man come in power. He said, well, that there uh, was 2,000 years ago. A lot of people, he wasn't talking about that. He was talking about the day of Pentecost. Some of you are right here. You ain't going to die till you see the outpour of the Holy Ghost and power, which was actually 50 days later. After he was, that was just before he was crucified and he said that. So he's telling them people, his disciples, that you ain't going to die till you're going to see this power come on the day of Pentecost. I'm coming back with power. That's what he was actually telling them. You ain't going to die till you see the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God ain't these buildings. The kingdom of God ain't mentioned. He said the kingdom of God is what? When the Holy Ghost gets in you. The kingdom of God is when Jesus in the Holy Ghost, he is the king of kings. And when that, when that baptism of the Holy Ghost, that's the spirit of Christ. He said when that king gets in you, you ain't going to die till you see the kingdom of God come in you with the Holy Ghost and power. That's what he's telling them. The kingdom of God is coming in us just a few days now. It's almost two months from now. You're going to get some power with this. Hallelujah. You're going to get some faith with this. What I've got as I am, you're going to be in this world. As I was as I am, you're going to be this world. You're going to be casting out devil. You're going to be going back and doing good. You're going to go back. These signs is going to follow you. You that's been following me. Hallelujah. You, all you've got to do is take up my life, take up my cross, and deny yourself and walk as I walk and as I am in this world. Now you're going to be there. That's where we are right now. Hallelujah. As he was then, we are now. Thank you, 
you, Jesus. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. And think about it. For whoever will save his life shall lose it. Whoever will lose his life for my sake shall save it. For what a man is advantage if he gains the whole world, lose his soul or himself or be a castaway. For whoever, whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he comes in his own glory and in the Father's. Hallelujah. Thank you, Greg. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And the holy angels. I tell you of the truth. There'll be some standing here which should not taste the dead till you see this great apple of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The kingdom of God coming in. He wasn't talking about now. Amen. See, some of you are talking about now. That's what he's talking about on the day of Pentecost. Yeah. Fifty days later. Yes. Yeah. Thank God. Amen. The kingdom of God. Amen. He said, well, you have to, well, if you're wrong, I couldn't be wrong because the Holy Ghost came with power. Amen. Amen. And the Holy Ghost... And then and when the Holy Ghost came, he says, now the, I'm with you, but soon the kingdom of God is going to be in you. Amen. When the Holy Ghost come in, him, that was the kingdom of God in him. So, you understand? That was the kingdom of God in them. And that's why we, when you get to baptism of the Holy Ghost, you ain't just running and hopping like a frog. Thank God, you got God in you. You got Christ. He's, he is everything Jesus. The Holy Ghost is everything Jesus was. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth was what? With the Holy Ghost. Every miracle he done. So now God has given you that kingdom. That's what made him a kingdom. That's what made him so powerful. When that Holy Ghost went in him, praise God, hallelujah. And that's what's going to make you powerful. That's what's going to make you these signs of body. That's what's going to make you what God wants you to be. Is that baptism of the Holy Ghost. I said, God's going to send that fire to burn up all that cell. Burn up that chest, burn up that trash. And hallelujah. And you're going to come out baptized with the Holy Ghost at fire. Hallelujah. Oh, God. I said, I just want to be saved. I said, I just want to be saved. Hallelujah. God's coming with power. He came with power on the day of He's coming again with power. They've got to be. They've got to be. Don't be ashamed. You know, some people be ashamed. Why don't you lift up your hand to the Lord and let him search your heart. Thank you, Jesus. Let him search your heart. Right now, there's a cleansing. There's a washing. Hallelujah. Oh, there's a washing of the water. Of the word. Lord, this cleanse of his any besetting sins. Blood of man. Lord, when you heal people, you washed them, you forgave them. When you saved them, you healed them. Lord Jesus. Lord, we behold you as the Lamb of God that has took away the sins of the world. We behold you as the Lord that healeth us. We behold you that John came to baptize with water, but you come to baptize us with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for shedding your blood. Thank you for that blood and water rushing out of your side to wash my sins away. Hallelujah. Oh Lord. Mighty one of Israel. Bless the Lord. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to pray for some sick. I'll be at Lord Mother Jackson's church tonight. Uh, I guess that's since I don't know how to get over there, but somebody help me help us over there. Be over there for tonight.